Hey, what's up guys? Eddie here as DJ11 from Jade Music Studios. Uh, today we're just going to have a quick tip just about how to bring out the high end of your percussion. Let's get to it. So I've got this track that I've almost fully mixed down. I balanced all the faders, EQ'd and compressed how I wanted to. And I just noticed that during this louder section of the track, the high end percussion isn't quite coming through in the mix. So if we have a quick listen to this section of the track. So you can see that these two sounds both got a lot of energy in this area and I really want the high end percussion to be standing out up here, even though most of the transient energy is down here. In doing this, I don't want to roll off too much of the leads. Um, I think they sound pretty cool as they are. That's just a double look up for any of you skeptics. And I've already rolled off above 17, so that's fairly high. Maybe I could go down to 16. Let's have a quick listen. Probably there. So one way to bring out the high-end definition is to use the SPL Vitalizer. This is an interesting plugin. It can be pretty extreme and it can be very subtle, but we're going to use it in a subtle manner. I think the key to this technique, especially at this late stage in the mix, is to do as little to the audio as possible. I don't want to be doing anything, doing anything too crazy. It is sitting quite nicely during the, during the more stripped back parts of the track. Let's just have a quick listen to that. Yeah, it's sounding pretty good uh, when these leads aren't direct playing. If you notice that on the percussion bus, I do have uh, some transition automation happening with a transient designer, uh, a reverb, and some filtering that looks like so. And I don't want to hear any of that when I'm setting these settings. So I'm just going to loop this section here. So this plugin has a couple of different signal paths to the left of the process knob and to the right of the process knob. We're not going to touch the stereo expander and I'm not going to touch the drive. I don't need to add any more distortion. I don't think anyway. Uh, the bass and compression knob, that is one signal path. And the high, mid-high tune knob, that is another signal path. The amount that you set the process to will affect both of these signals. The higher you set this, at least relative to the mid-high tune, the more that happens to the higher end frequencies, but also the greater the dampening on the mid side of the filter. So if I set it to three kilohertz, what is above there will be accentuated. What is below here will be dampened. Uh, so a good way to set this, I just set it to 10. I sweep around for a sweet spot. Once I found a sweet spot, I will reduce that and bring it up until I can hear what I want to hear. If you go too nuts, it will just sound just like a distorted mess. So if I set it to 10, I'm going to isolate this so you can really hear what's going on. And I'm going to sweep. So here we go. Okay, so you can really hear the dampening when I've got this all the way up to 22 kilohertz. That means that everything's on the mid frequency side of the filter and you can really hear it being dampened. That just destroys it. And over here, everything higher than 1.1 kilohertz is being accentuated. So that's why it's perceived to sound brighter. I think around between three and four sounded quite nice. So I'm just gonna introduce the process until I think it sounds good. So just around there, uh, four to six, that's not much, but it, for me, it really does open up the top end. You get a lot more definition and I will have to even out the output. Take away that level difference. You can really, really need to focus your ears on the high end and just how much more defined they become. But let's have a listen to that in the mix.
Okay, it makes a subtle difference, but it does make a difference. It's all about these little things that you do late uh, during the mixing process that make a big difference to the overall picture. The last thing I'm going to check is this LCEQ knob. Now this works in tandem with the intensity. Pretty sure that this is a broadband filter and I'm going to employ the same technique. I'm just going to stick it on 10 for no particular reason, just so I know it's doing something. I'm going to sweep it until I find a sweet spot. I might not find a sweet spot. I think it's sounding pretty good with that additional setting as it is actually. So I'm going to do it on part B so we can A, B. I'm also going to level out the gate oh, also. Okay, so same sort of process. Stick it up to 10 so it's doing something. Sweep the frequencies until you hear something good. So for me, just below 14 kilohertz, that's where something nice is starting to happen. I'm just gonna lower the intensity knob and just introduce that until I hear a taste of what I was just hearing. So let's do a comparison of the AB, that is without the broadband high-end EQ, and this is with it. So for me, definitely, you get a lot more high-end definition using this section in combination with this section. Uh, let's see what that sounds like in the mix. For me, that definitely really brings out the high-end percussion. It's tough to hear, especially on headphones, so I would recommend once you've applied these settings, have a bit of a break, walk away, rest your ears, come back, and then compare it to your reference track. Now that I've set that during the busiest part of the track, I'm just gonna check what it sounds like during a more stripped back part of the track, just to make sure that I haven't overcooked it. it might be a little bit overdone so i'm going to need to rest my ears and just check that but you've got the point of the technique now, if you feel like you need a bit more you could probably add some more high-end energy with some eq the mag eq4 is very popular for this also is the api 560 people tend to use the uh, analog model eqs and just give us a little boost up around the top just a bit of a high shelf i'm not going to use that one though i'm just going to try it with the mag because everyone loves the mag Okay, fairly subtle. Let's try it at the busiest part of the track. I quite like how that sounds, so I think I'm going to keep that. So I'll just do a before and after. I'm going to group them together. You can hear before and after this technique during this busy part of the track and during this more strip back part of the track. So for me, that's sounding really good. I will have to rest my ears now and just do a quick sanity check. One thing to make sure is just to confirm how much level this is actually increasing, what's going on in the frequency spectrum and the effect it's having next to the kick in the bass. Okay, that's sounding quite good to me, I like it. So there you go guys, that is one method of bringing out some more high-end definition in your high-end percussion. 
key to this technique is to do as little as possible this late in the production process. Let me know what you think of this technique. Uh, would you try it? Would you not? Have you had good results? Have you had bad results? Can you hear a difference or can you not? Let me know in the comments. I'm interested to know your thoughts. And as always, happy music making.